Welcome back to In Business. We are watching a global market sell off right at the start of today's session. U.S. stocks are down more than 2% so far, and we are technically now in a correction phase. Here to tell us what you do with your portfolio right now, Charlie Babrinsky, Vice Chairman of Aerial Investments. His fund that he manages is up 27% in the last year. Uh, Charles, you've got a sense of the retail investor out there. On a scale of 1 to 10, what's the level of fear right now? I'll give it an eight. Uh, it's down from where it was a year ago when people were just selling at any price, trying to get into cash. Uh, the good news is the retail investor really never got that confident, but he or she was putting their toe back in the water, and I think they've taken it out this last week. Uh, the point's been made that in today's morning session, we're seeing a lot of correlation across asset classes, across sectors right now. In essence, people just selling what they have, not necessarily what they want. Uh, we're in correction right now. What are you doing? Well, the good news is that we do try to be, as the cliche goes, greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. And right now, people are uh, clearly fearful. So we are trying to take advantage of names here that we think, as you say, are being sold off in uh, sympathy with the broad market. But I would say everything's not going down at the same rate. More defensive names, higher quality names are doing better today. Uh, names like actually the for-profit education names, which tend to do well in a bad economy, are actually up today. The pharma, healthcare names are outperforming. So the higher quality stuff is what we have been buying and we're still buying. Uh, we got a figure here in the U.S., the uh, leading economic indicator showing a first decline that we've seen in 13 months. It may be a sign that the expansion in the U.S. economy is slowing down. In light of that, are you still bringing more money home to the U.S.? I mean, how do you, how do you hedge against that? Yeah, we, we at Ariel believe in investing in what you know, and so all of our funds are domestically focused anyway. So, uh, but I will say that I actually think the managers that we talk to are guardedly optimistic. They are more optimistic about their business and the outlook than they were three months ago or six months ago, certainly versus a year ago. So we remain cautiously optimistic about the U.S. economy. But the, the counter to that is looking at LIBOR OIS spreads. I mean, if you take a look, there is certainly a growing fear of, of lending, interbank lending right now. Yeah, no doubt about it. Fear levels are up a lot. I'm only commenting on what we're hearing from the managers that run our portfolio companies. And they, so far, haven't seen any softness. Uh, in fact, the, the manufacturers who are filling inventory levels are telling us that inventories were at unsustainably low levels. And so business is better. I think this is right now a case of fear getting ahead of reality. So are you changing your cash levels right now? We, all, we almost are always pretty close to fully invested. We think trying to time the market is a fool's game. And so we tend to believe that stocks do outperform cash in the long term. So we remain pretty fully invested, less than 2% cash. Are you rebalancing? Um, we're buying names that got excessively cheap. We have some names like Aflac, which have sold off in a big way over the last three week, weeks because of concerns about Europe. And we think Aflac's business is in great shape, so we've been buying more of that. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, we're buying a lot more of the uh, for-profit education stocks because they do tend to do well in this kind of environment. And there's been a lot of regulatory concerns that we think are overblown. So sure, we are moving money around, but we're sticking with the high-quality names that we always invest in. Well, when you talk to management teams, when you say that they're guardedly optimistic right now, what is the one thing that you hear from them as to what concerns them most? Well, obviously, if the economy turned negative um, again, then that's going to hurt their businesses. Uh, they can certainly agree that if Europe goes into a cataclysmic bank failure, that's going to mean a downturn in the European economy, and that's going to have some effect on their businesses. Well, a lot of these companies have 20, 25 percent of their business coming out of Europe. But what they're okay. saying is so far, they're seeing good strength in the U.S. in particular, and actually no weakness yet in Europe.